I want to jump into some spline masking and rotoscoping. And you can follow along with me here. On video two, I'm going to select movie. And I'm going to pick from the red data CD that came with your series. I'm going to pick in the spline masking and rotoscoping folder, skating blank. And that's for video two. For video one, I'm going to go same thing, movie file, skating full. So now I've got two images there. I'm also going to change my duration to three seconds. Now in the composite window, we have a scene where if we advance the timeline here, you'll get a skateboarder coming through and jumping up over a skateboard and then rolling out of the frame. That's on track one. And if we leave this somewhere in the middle and turn skating full on track one off, we see that we have the same exact scene in the background, but with no skateboarder. And I'm turning it off and on. So what we want to do is a combination of a couple of different things. What we're learning right now is spline masking and rotoscoping. You'll hear people say rotoscoping when they refer to painting on frames of video, when they refer to masking something in each frame of video, maybe even uh, masking uh, an individual so they can put him in a different situation, so, sort of like Chroma King, but without the Chroma screen. That's all rotoscoping. Basically taking one frame at a time and altering it to make an animation is rotoscoping. And that's what we're going to do right here. So let's go back down to the timeline. Let's go from right in the middle at one and a half seconds. Okay, we're at one and a half seconds in the animation now. And I'm going to go ahead and increase the scale of this so that I can see it a little bit better. Now's a good time to use your, uh, your client monitor, your preview monitor, because once you start making masks, you're going to want to see how it looks on a real monitor. And you can use this nice preview option, the uh, high, high quality frame to monitor, if you've got your monitor set up right in your preferences window, like I showed you earlier. So it's a good time to use that now. So what we're going to do is we're going to put a spline mask right along this skateboard and kind of take the skateboard out of the picture. So it looks like this guy's just floating down the street with no skateboard. And the way we do that is just to first make a spline object, which we do by adding spline media. So we'll click that and we all of a sudden get a spline track. The tools also show up and the pen tool is automatically selected. We're ready to make a spline object. So what I'm going to do is just lay some points down. And here's where we run into a little bit of trouble. Remember if I, I told you before that you've uh, got to turn the face off the first time you do it so you can see what you're doing. I was able to get around it. But what's interesting here is that we've got a border on our spline and we really don't want that. So over here in the controls window, uh, we go to border and turn that off. And you'll see that looks a lot better. Now we've got a plain spline here, no border. And I'm going to choose my arrow to get rid of these points and take a look at it there. And it looks like I've, I've hidden that skateboard pretty well. But now uh, I've got this uh, tan colored spline laying here and that's not at all going to look normal. So what I'm going to have to do is change this into a mask. So I go ahead and come down here to the timeline window grab my spline track and I'm going to put it on skating full AVI which is the one with the guy skating in it grab the spline track and drop it, drop it right on the mask and you'll see that actually everything outside the mask disappeared and everything inside the mask is still there we need to invert this mask and that just happens to be what this button is right here so we click invert and it inverts the mask now because this was shot in the daytime and maybe uh, one shot was shot a little bit after the other you see that there's a difference in color here if I turn off skating full AVI it may look a little bit lighter now I'm turning off the bottom track and just showing the uh, underneath but I can see that it's a little bit lighter and I can fix that I can color correct that but it's interesting because this was shot this is actually part of the same shot so it must have been the shadows underneath the rider that, uh, that make that big difference. Don't forget you can add filters to the splines. Let's try and add a little blur to the spline. Colors and blurs. Let's go with the Gaussian blur. Let 
we drop that onto the spline. And that does give us some interesting results. I can see a little too much of the skateboard, but if we wanted to, we could manipulate this Gaussian blur and uh, change it a little bit, maybe shrink it down. And that actually might work out pretty well. So what you want to do is get the right mix of blur. And if it's not going to work, you see here it's getting a little bit lighter underneath. If it's not going to work, then we're just going to have to resort to going some, some color correction on the bottom. So let's go ahead and try that. We'll go ahead and try some color correction on the bottom layer. I want to make it a little bit darker. So we'll select it, filter, colors, and blur. And let's do hue, light, and saturation which presents us with a few options up here in the controls window and I think lightness is what we're after here so I'm going to pull this down just a little bit just barely I want to just barely bring it down see how that looks now if we want to take a look at how this looks versus how not having it on at all looks we can very easily do that down here in the timeline all we have to do is find our hue saturation and lightness filter and, and, and click this eyeball. It'll turn it off. And we can toggle between what it's going to look like with and without the filter. And if we don't like it, we just get rid of the filter by hitting delete. So here we are toggling. You can see that's a little bit lighter. That's without the filter. A little bit darker. That's with the filter. So it is doing something. I'll go back over here to lightness and make, maybe go down maybe 1.75 and see what that does. That's pretty good. Again, we'll toggle the filter on and off. A little bit more noticeable of a difference there. So that's all good and, and, and solid. We've got that done. We, it looks pretty good, but that's only one frame. And here's where the rotoscoping really comes into it. If you really want this to turn out right, you're going to have to do this for each and every frame. You really aren't going to be able to make a mask that moves with the motion tracker because the, the rider's feet change position. Uh, so frequently you're really gonna have to go frame by frame and see this is the next frame our mask actually works okay here we could move it a little bit make a new keyframe and move it let's see as he moves out of the mask the skateboard shows back up that mask is only gonna be there for that one frame and then we'll move it with the rider so here's an example of what it looks like when it's all done Unfortunately, it does take quite a bit of time, but know that you can do it with red, and it's very easy. Um, it just does take some time to get every single frame, depending. This is only 90 frames here because it's a three-second uh, animation, but it could be worse.